What's up YouTube? So this is week two of our shred series and we did our check-ins this morning and right now I weighed in at 223. So that is a seven pound loss since I started at 230, which the majority of that's gonna be just water weight. The first five days, I wasn't doing like a structured plan at all. I was just making sure that I was eating like my normal healthy foods that I always usually stick to, but I just like cut out any type of junk food or anything like that. And I was making sure to get back on like five to six meals a day. But nothing structured, nothing like uh, planned out. I didn't know like how much protein or uh, carbs or fats or anything like that that I was taking in. And then on Tuesday is when I started a structured plan and I also started doing morning cardio. <laughs> I started at 136 last week and this morning I weighed in at 132, so I had a four pound drop. And I'm sure half of that was just water, not fat, uh, just from eating junk food and going to eating clean. I kind of did the same thing as Tyler where I started taking out all the junk food and I implemented clean foods, but I actually started counting macros, so we're doing a little bit different as far as plans go where I'm doing a flexible plan where I'm still eating clean foods, but it's not necessarily the same foods at the same times every day. It's more intuitive and I'm eating when I'm hungry. And later on, we get to have our first cheat meal, which I'm pretty excited about. And I'm super excited. I'm super excited. <laughs> I actually didn't feel like I needed a cheat meal, but today I actually like felt for the first time like I needed to have a cheat meal. I felt really, really weak when we went yeah. to the gym. So I, I think it's about time to do a little refeed. What I do suggest when you're doing these uh, cheat meals or whatever you want to call them, refeed days or refeed meals or whatever, uh, my main, my main, main, main advice is, <laughs> I couldn't think of the word, my main advice is to not binge. If you get in that habit, that's just going to be like a weekly habit that you're going to put yourself into. I've been there. I've done that. I would stay, you know, my normal meal plan during the week and then on that cheat meal, I would I was to a point where I would just like eat so much that I would get sick. So mentally go into your cheat meals without thinking like, oh my gosh, I can eat whatever I want. I'm gonna fucking stuff myself and everything, and that's not healthy. So don't start that relationship. Either. Now, if if you do feel that way, if you feel like you're gonna overstuff yourself during your cheat meal, that is a bad sign that you're possibly being underfed on whatever plane you're on. Um, you should feel like you're hungry, like you're ready to eat a big meal, but it shouldn't be like you feel like you can't stop eating once you once you start. So I see the girls that binge the most are the ones that restrict themselves the most calorie-wise. So like, you want your calories to be at an amount where you can see good progress in a drop, but they shouldn't be so extreme that when you go into a cheat meal, you feel like you're going to die if you don't have that meal, or you need to eat you know eight times the amount you would normally eat in a treat meal. Yeah, because I mean, you always got to keep in mind too, is like food is always going to be there. It's not like this is going to be your last meal ever. <laughs> so <laughs> keep in mind because like a big, a big like binge like that could definitely set you back on your progress. And what I see with athletes is that they have a big binge and they gain a bunch of weight. It actually derails their mental state and they feel like what's the point of me dieting now because I gained all the weight back in one night. So if you have a meal that, you know, cuts your cravings, makes you feel good, and then the next day you can get back on your plan, you will see another drop and you won't lose your progress. But if you binge, like Tyler said, if you just eat and eat and eat till you're sick, you're gonna lose all the progress you just made and mentally you're gonna feel defeated. Yeah, and it's, you're probably gonna feel depressed and you're gonna have guilt and everything, so. And you're gonna turn to food. And then you're gonna turn to more food. <laughs> <laughs> because I've been there, I've done that, and it is definitely miserable because then like food starts controlling so many of your thoughts and everything. So that's a different topic for a different video. Um, we are going to walk cookie and then head to the gym.
today we are hitting some back. This first exercise we are doing is a wide grip pull down. I like this exercise as kind of just to warm everything up, get a lot of blood into the lats and everything. Uh, what you want to do on this one is make sure that you're squeezing your shoulder blades down on each rep. What people have the tendency of doing is trying to get too heavy on this exercise and their biceps and their forearms and everything start taking over. So if you, if you feel this exercise more in your forearms and your biceps, go ahead and try to lighten the weight up a little bit and focus on just solely using that back. So when you do these standing pull downs, which you can do these with other attachments as well. You can use like a V-bar if you want to. You can use a rope if you want to. I suggest just switching up week to week using a different um, attachment. But one thing that you want to remember on these, because I see this exercise done wrong all the time. And um, what you want to do, have a slight bend in your knee. You want to lean forward, get the full stretch up, filling your lat and everything, all that stretching out. And then when you're coming down at the bottom, watch my, watch my shoulders rotate. So it's almost like I'm rotating my shoulders back. At that point right there, that's the point that a lot of people don't do, is this right here. So it's almost like you're trying to stick your chest out at the bottom. That's when you want to squeeze the shoulder blades together. Yeah.
cables. So it's something you could do if you have an apartment gym where you just have a cable pulley system. We just use different attachments for all of our back movements. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about what they look for at MPC and IFB bikini competitions. I'm currently an active IFB pro and I coach MPC and IFB competitors for their shows full time. And I get a lot of questions of what do they look for at shows. In bikini competitions, it's a subjective sport, so it is based off the judging panel's opinion of that specific person and what they are looking for. In bikini, it's not about being the leanest or the driest on stage, um, but it's an overall package. It's almost like a pageant for fitness girls. So they're looking at your poise, your overall presentation, your skin tone, they're um, looking at your balance and your shape. So it's you want to have a muscular physique, but nothing overpowering. You're not going to have striations or veins showing, um, but it's, it's really an overall package. So presentation can take you very far in the bikini industry. Going from your suit color to your hair, to your makeup, to your tan, you want everything to match your physique. Um, for competitions, I always recommend getting a high quality suit. Even if you buy a more expensive suit, but you don't get the stones on it because you can't afford to spend $1,000, I always suggest going to CJ's Elite. She makes all the top pro suits, um, and there really is a difference in quality with a CJ suit. Um, the connectors and the cut of the suit is perfect for the MPC and IFBB. This is actually a suit of one of my clients bought Savannah, so Savannah's going to be wearing this at her next show. Um, but you know, in bikini, everything's important. So you want to focus on your overall presentation and not just your physique. So in bikini, when I say balance and overall shape, I'm talking about a, a tiny, tight waist, full glutes, full hamstrings, nice shoulder caps. Um, again, but nothing striated and no veins. And it's not about being overly lean or overly dry. It's just a healthy shape. At NPC shows, you're given 12 to 16 seconds to perform your routine. Your routine at a regional show or even a national show should be a front pose, a back pose, and end with a front pose, and then your curtsy off to the judges. And each pose should be held roughly three seconds. So when you're on stage, you wanna think about not fidgeting and not moving too much because you wanna be an easy physique to judge. So you wanna hit a pose that really flatters you and be able to hold it. As you get to the pro stage, you have more and more time to display your physique. So when you watch girls at the Arnold or at the Olympia who are on stage for almost a full minute, those are pros and they have more time to move their hair, walk around, where when you're a national competitor or a regional competitor, you want to showcase your best poses and only your best poses since you have such a limited amount of time. And now I'm done. We're going to end today's vlog here, so subscribe to our channel and comment below what you like, what you don't like, and what you'd like to see next time. Say bye! Bye! <laughs>